In this video we look at how to find maxima and minima of functions. Often in the real world we're interested in finding the biggest or smallest thing, the least or the most or the fewest of some sort of quantity. When you can write that quantity as a mathematical function then differentiation and calculus are how we can find the things that we're interested in, those biggest or smallest or least or most or fewest. So let's take as a really simple example, imagine that we could write the cost of manufacturing an orange juice carton using this function right here, c of x equal to h squared minus 7.4h plus 14.7 cents, where h is the height of the carton. And if we were asked to find what size carton is the cheapest to construct, a simple way to do it would be just to graph that function and find where the cost value is lowest, which is right here. So we can figure out that it's roughly about 3.5 for h. So the height of the carton that would be cheapest is 3.5. Now we can actually figure it out exactly though if we use our calculus, differentiate this function, find where that minimum occurs. So this video is all about that. So let's make it a bit more generic. We're talking here about local maxima and minima. The local maxima and minima are just regions on a curve where it appears to change direction from being moving in a positive direction to a negative direction. Okay, so in other words, where the curve changes from increasing to decreasing. So a local maximum would be somewhere like this, or this, or this one over here. And minima are where it changes from a decreasing curve to an increasing curve, so somewhere like these points. Now remember that the first derivative is the thing that tells us about the slope of a curve at any point. So if the first derivative is positive, then the function is increasing, something like these points, these points here. We have a positive derivative. If it's negative, the function is decreasing, so like these ones. So when the derivative is zero, the slope of the curve is horizontal, like these places here. And it's possible that there is a maximum or a minimum value of the function occurring at those locations. There's actually some other places where the curve can have a zero derivative that aren't local maxima and minima. So what we're going to do to try to find maxima and minima is find these points where we have a zero slope and where the slope changes from positive to negative or alternatively negative to positive. So that's how we're going to try to find them. So these points where we have a zero derivative, they get a special name. We call them either critical points or stationary points. So critical because they're important or stationary because they're kind of where the, where the curve stops for a moment. It's not increasing and it's not decreasing. Now these kinds of points where the derivative is zero, they can be local minima, like this one down here. They could be local maxima, like this one. Or they can be what we call points of horizontal inflection, like this one. Now the derivative there would be zero, zero slope of the curve, but it's neither a maxima nor a minimum, so that's a point of horizontal inflection. Now if you're wondering about the local point, instead of just being a maximum or a minimum, we've got that special local sitting in front of them, and that's just because it means in that neighbourhood that's the maximum, so a little bit to either side is always less than that point. And down here at the local minimum, a little bit to either side, it's always more than that minimum this function actually keeps on going up like this and down like this so this point isn't the minimum of the function the minimum of the function doesn't exist it goes off towards minus infinity and similarly this one's not actually the maximum of the function it's just a local maximum so being specific with that terminology is actually important so how do we find these things well the first step to finding where maxima and minima are is to locate the critical points so finding them is this four-step process. First, we differentiate the function, we set that derivative to zero, and we solve the resulting equation to figure out what the x value is. Once we have that, we substitute the value into the function to find the vertical location, and that gives us the critical points of the function. Not necessarily the local maxima and minima, but it's certainly one step along the way. So let's try it out with this example. We've got to find the critical points of y equal to x squared minus 4x plus 7. And we've just done a quick sketch of it here, and we can see that there should only be one of them, and it should be roughly at x equals 2, I think. So let's see what we've got to do. First, we need to differentiate the function. So we have y dash is 2x minus 4. 
then we need to set the derivative equal to 0. 0 equals 2x minus 4. Solve that for x. So we rearrange, we get 2x equals 4. And finally, x equal to 2, just like I thought. That seems to be the only one point. And finally, substitute that value into the function to find the vertical location. So y at 2 equals 2 squared minus 4 times 2 plus 7, which is 4 minus 8 plus 7 is 3, I think. So we have that the critical point is point 0.23, which kind of makes sense if you look at the picture. 2 and 3. So that's our only possible critical point for that function. Now depending on the function you could get all sorts of things there. You can have more than one critical point. Uh, some, some curves have no critical points. Uh, it really depends on the function. But the next step along in our process is figuring out whether those points are maxima or minima, local maxima or minima. So how do we know? Um, how do we know if it's an inflection point? Well, we can determine whether it's a critical, whether the critical point is a maximum or a minima using two different tests. One is the first derivative test, and the other is the second derivative test. So let's have a look at those in turn, and we'll talk about their relative advantages and disadvantages as we go. The first one, the first derivative test, looks pretty long and complicated, and it is a bit involved, um, but let's see how it works. Basically, let's say we have a function and we've figured out one of its critical points, x equals c and y equals f of c. What we need to do is evaluate the derivative a little bit to the left and evaluate the little bit to the right and see what happens to the derivative. Now basically this is all about figuring out whether on one side of the critical point is the function decreasing then increasing or is it increasing and then decreasing. Or is it doing neither of those two things? So what we have here is that if the, uh, if the derivative changes from being negative to the left of the critical point to being positive to the right, okay, then we've got this sort of situation. It's decreasing, then it's zero, then it's increasing, which means we're going through a local minimum on our curve. On the other hand, if it changes from being positive to the left of C, our critical point, hits 0 at C and then goes to being negative, something like this, then our curve's going through a location of a local maximum. If the sign of the derivative doesn't change, so if it's positive, then 0, then positive, or negative, then 0, then negative, we're going through an inflection point. Okay, so the first derivative test is a bit messy, but it does tell us all three possible cases. It can identify all of them. So let's try it out with this example. We've got the function y equals x cubed, etc. Find the critical points, classify them with the first derivative test. So our critical points, let's first of all get the derivative, dy dx is going to be 3x squared minus 6x minus 9. Set that to 0. Oops, that's minus 9. and solve. Now our quadratic formula tells us that x is 6 plus or minus the square root of 36 minus 4 times a times c is 108 oh, plus over 2 times 3 is 6 and we get 6 plus or minus the square root of 144 over 6. That's 3 and minus 1. So we have critical points at 3 and minus 15 by substituting 3 into the function and minus 1, 17. Again, the same thing, substitute minus 1 into the function. So are they maxima or minima, local maxima or minima? Well, let's use the first derivative test to check that out. So what we do is we look at each of the critical points in turn. And what we need to do is look at the value of the derivative on either side of the critical point. So first of all, we want to look at a value of x equals 3. We already know that the derivative at the critical point is 0. And the first derivative set, test says to look a little bit to either side of the critical point. So I'm just going to go with 2 and 4. Now it could be as close as you like. And actually the closer it is, the better it is, and the more real the result will be. But for this one I know it's going to be okay with 2 and 4. So let's just work with those. And from my previous slide, the derivative is 3x squared minus 6x 
minus 9. Now at x equals 2, I'm going to have 12 minus 12 minus 9. So we get minus 9. And at x equals 4, the derivative is 15. So here we can see that we go from a negative derivative to a zero derivative and then a positive derivative. So the first derivative test is telling me that I've got a local minimum for this particular critical point. So we can pop that in local minimum at x equals 3 by the first derivative test. Okay, um, maybe pause the video now and try to do it yourself for the other critical point x equal to minus 1. So just have a go at that. Alright, so I've worked with uh, minus 1, minus 2 and 0 as my nearby points. I get 15 for the derivative and minus 9, so that means I'm going from a positive to 0 to a negative derivative, or a curve that's looking like this. So we've got a local maximum there, so local max at x equal to minus 1. And if you pop back up to the previous slide, you'll see that's exactly what we expected, a maximum at minus 1 and a minimum over here at x equals 3. And everything's worked out in this case. Um, the problem that we haven't seen here, the problem with the first derivative test, is that we've been completely arbitrary about how we chose these nearby values. In actual fact, you need to go closer and closer and closer, and it depends on the function whether you're actually going to get it right. Uh, here it didn't matter because the two points were so far away from each other. But if we'd have chosen a nearby point that was actually past this other local minimum, then we might have actually got some conflicting results and the first derivative test wouldn't have given us the right answers. So that brings us to another test we can use, which is the second derivative test. So the first derivative test is good, but it's a little bit inaccurate because we don't really know what a little bit needs to be for any particular function, how far on either side of the point we need to go. The second derivative test is more accurate, but it can't actually tell us uh, all the time what's going on. So the way it works is this. Say we've got a function with a critical point c, f of c, just like always. We basically find the second derivative, and then we see, is the second derivative positive, negative, or zero? If it's positive, then the critical point's a local minimum. If it's negative, then the critical point is a local maximum. But if it's zero, we can't actually use this test, and we then have to go back to the first derivative test anyway. So it's a bit easier, it's more accurate, but it doesn't always work. So let's try it out with this example. We've got to find the critical points of that function and classify them using the second derivative test. So to find our critical points, we're going to need the derivative, first of all, dy dx. It's a polynomial, so it's not too difficult. 12x squared minus 6x minus 90. To find the critical points, we're going to set that to 0. 0 is 12x squared minus 6x minus 90. And then solve the quadratic, we get x equal to 6 plus or minus square root of 36 plus 4320. I did that one on the calculator. And over 24. So the this is actually, the square root of this is just 66. So we've got 6 plus or minus root 66 over 24 which means we've got 3 and 2.5 negative as our critical point location. So that's all the same as last time. Here's where it differs. We're going to use the second derivative test. So we have f of x equal to 4x cubed minus 3x squared minus 90x plus 120. We already know the first derivative is 12x squared minus 6x minus 90. And now we need the second derivative, so f double dash x is going to be 24x minus 6. So we need to evaluate that at each of our critical point locations. So at x equals 3, we have f double dash at 3 is 72 minus 6, which is 66. So f double dash is positive, and that tells us at x equals 3, we have a local minimum positive gives a minimum. At the other point, at x equal to minus 2.5, f double prime minus 2.5 is minus 66 this time, which is less than 0. So at x equal to minus 2.5, have a local maximum. So it's worked out okay in this case. We can just check that. 
got our local maximum yep, and local minimum. So all looks pretty good. So there's uh, how we find critical points for curves and how we find whether they're maxima or minima or points of horizontal inflection. Okay, make sure you go out and have a go at some of the worksheets for this because this kind of work is the theory behind what we do in the next couple of videos as well.